Hey everyone, so it's time to do our health check of World of Warcraft. People have been calling the death of WoW and calling that expansions could save WoW for a long time. I mean, probably since its beta got a bit laggy in 2004. Of course, we had the pandas, you know, they got people's knickers in a twist, and I don't just mean the furries. We had Warlords of Draenor, which went and, uh, was Warlords of Draenor, and then there was Legion and BFA, an incredible roller coaster that then broke down a bit, which kind of sucked. And that means that a lot rides in Shadowlands as an expansion, right? It does have a lot of work to do. And like expansions that have came before, there's no shortage of controversy and intrigue from the beta. So today, you are going to learn a lot about Shadowlands. That's what this video allows us to do. You're going to find out where it wins, where it loses, and just what direction World of Warcraft, the big, like, multi-game project of Blizzard Entertainment is going to be going in. Also, it's a new month. We are doing a pretty nifty special this time around. It is our 2020 channel pin. Uh, man, these look so good. So there's this. There's also going to be the Demon Hunter pin this month as well. I know, two pins! Madness! And of course, art from the art team that uh, I guess I have to show like this because of the shape of my arm. Uh, of course, you can get all of this as well as behind the scenes, early access, um, the daily briefing as well over on Patreon. And uh, Patreon seriously does uh, help out what we're doing so much. I mean, hey, we have just commissioned a 3D artist to do something pretty damn nifty that you you're going to see in like uh, in like two weeks. I mean, this is a 3D artist who did work for Game of Thrones. It's pretty cool. Okay, patrons, thank you for your support. It is going to make just what we're doing so much better as we head into the Shadowlands. And the rest of the viewers, thank yous too. Okay, with that said, let's get going. In any sort of video like this, the first thing we've got to do is establish our baseline, and that is the state of WoW. World of Warcraft is actually doing extremely well as per Activision Blizzard's financial earnings reports. It is doing incredibly. World of Warcraft subscribers doubled in the quarter after Classic came out, and, uh, well, the previous quarter is the one that ended just after 8.2 launched. So what does that mean? Pretty simple. Classic carried the hell out of World of Warcraft in 2019. And that's the thing, Classic will do pretty great, probably until Naxxramas, which should be later on this year. And I'd say after that, it still will have a decent tail to it, but players will move through it and they will run out of things to do because it is a finite game. Of course, Classic TBC will help a lot. There's a lot of rumors right now and we can expect that in 2021. And that, I would say, will hold a lot of World of Warcraft interest from 2021 to 2022, just like how Vanilla held it from 2019 to 2020. Then, of course, Classic Wrath will absolutely happen. That'll probably hold us from 2022 to to 2023. I think that is basically just almost guaranteed financial success for Blizz for a good amount of time. After that, though, yes, it's possible that there could be some struggles if things don't change in the modern game. What we do know is that the classic project is a humongous shot in the arm that will work for a good few years. World of Warcraft, the business, will be insulated from the quality and the woes of the modern game for years of classic. But after that, and no matter what, modern World of Warcraft will be what Blizzard will have to rely on. And with it, along with Call of Duty being one of the two main financial pillars of the company, the state of modern World of Warcraft means a lot for Activision's, well, stock price, and them being one of the hottest publishers in gaming. So if it's doing so well, does World of Warcraft need saving? Is this a totally pointless video? Well, we've got to define success. I would say here, success means growing in terms of users, retaining those users, and of course, driving more revenue from the users that you've got. And of course, in a growth-driven market, stagnation is essentially failure. Warlords of Draenor damaged World of Warcraft. We actually made a video, the last one in this now two-part series of WoW being saved, we made that in Legion Beta. And Legion pretty much did do that. It was a dire state for World of Warcraft at the end of WoD, but Legion got people back. WoD, of course, wasn't just a letdown, it was a heavily marketed letdown, and that meant that people knew. So, with Classic helping out, WoW is going to do just fine, as long as it does not have a complete disaster. Modern may need saving for the sake of its own players, but for the next few years, I think that is basically it. So, does World of Warcraft need saving? Well, games live or die by the reputation, and Modern WoW's reputation, I think, does need saving. There is a lot of good, there is a lot of bad, and I think that is a little bit of the problem. It is a surprisingly controversial game, a game that I think makes stumbles that it really shouldn't. 
And long term for Blizzard, what they need to do is they need to convert classic fans into modern fans. If they don't do that, then Blizzard's most profitable intellectual property will face risk. And that is the challenge of Ian Hazakostas' development team. There was, however, a time not so long ago when we asked ourselves a very similar question. A battle for Azeroth that damaged World of Warcraft, but in a unique way, and one that must be contrasted with WAD. At a basic level, Warlords of Draenor fell flat because it didn't offer enough content. It had severe problems, yes, but leveling was great, dungeons were great, raids were great, but it didn't go the distance. Month 1 was fine. Yes, there was a lot to do, and sure, garrisons isolated players and didn't really live up to their promise, but people still had plenty to do. But that month ended. Patch 6.1 then came along, and it added almost no content of note. Patch 6.2 added an okay zone and a pretty good raid, and that was essentially it. This was an expansion that had, I would say, mediocre systems and good enough content but nowhere near enough of it, and that meant the players were just not interested in sticking around. The value proposition was not there, and that's the thing. No matter how good that WOD content was, there just was not enough of it for people to actually stay subscribed. So they left. I think it's telling that the most fun version of this expansion was probably when Mythic Dungeons, Valor Points, and Time Walking came in with patch 6.2.3. Importantly though, classes were still simple enough, and borrowed power wasn't really a thing, save the Draenor perks you got while you were leveling, and regular things like class sets. So that's Warlords of Draenor. It was a pretty solid slice of World of Warcraft, but it was kind of the low-fat version, and there wasn't enough of it. People left, but I think they felt frustrated that they didn't have enough to do, but I don't think they felt like the game was massively fighting them. They just felt it was no longer of interest. And that's where we have to talk about BFA. I do not think that BFA had enough content, but what's different from WAD is that that was really not its big problem. World of Draenor, in many cases, was a great game for core players, but there just wasn't enough of it. And that's the difference. BFA was not a great game for hardcore players, and it also wasn't a great game for the casual players. They didn't get the promise of war fronts or islands or any of that. Class design changes, of course, damaged all aspects of gameplay, like the GCD. This, of course, impacted WoW's most dedicated players the most. Azerite was far less interesting than Nijin's equivalent, and all of this impacted, well, players, regular players. Because as a casual, you could go, you could get your Legion skins, you could faff about that casual stuff, and you'd be fine. But not so much here. BFA was full of so many issues, what in software people kind of call anti-patterns, right? Designs to solve a problem that end up having the opposite effect, or maybe unforeseen consequences. Azerite punished multi-specking. Azerite punished you for getting better gear because you had to re-earn your traits at the beginning. Reforging also punished you from playing multiple specs, and many more things. To cut a long story short, Warlords of Draenor had a small amount of content that was pretty fun to do, and you could raid log at the worst case, and you'd still have a pretty okay time. But with BFA, there was more content to do, but it was mired in systems that fought against you every step of the way, and that dared you to do things you didn't really want to do. Now what about the non-hardcore players, right? Well, the war campaigns were short, and they were not that good. The story was fragmented. It felt like vines. It was rushed through so fast that it skipped through so much lore and never did any of it justice. It's actually quite telling that the expansion's most successful storyline is one that happened almost entirely outside of gameplay, and that is the Sarfang cinematics. Then, of course, cosmetics were worse than ever because of losing tier sets on a class-by-class -class basis. Where Legion had loads of tints and things like class mounts, BFA just didn't have anything. Ages back, mounts used to be rewards for doing cool, unique raps like Order of the Cloud Serpent, but BFA just threw so many of them in RNG like islands. And of course, islands and warfronts. They didn't work for anyone, did they? Yes, the point here is that BFA it wasn't a game where people ran out of things to do. They ran out of the will to do anything in it, right? If you get bored and you don't have an overly negative experience, you'll wander off and you'll maybe think about coming back, as people certainly did for Legion. And that's what happened in Warlords of Draenor, right? If you're like me, you went, you played some freelancer, you played Mountain Blade. But in BFA, 
The game was fighting against you so much that many people, many that I know, just quit in frustration. They couldn't take the Titan Forging, the Azerite, the Essence Acquisition, the Corruption. It was all just too much. And of course, because so much time had to be put into getting those systems right, it meant the casual players who don't care about any of that just didn't have that much stuff to do. And even though the likes of 8.2 were pretty good, they were still full of frustrating systems. So, that is World of Warcraft's last two failures, and I would say that if Battle for Azeroth happened again, that would pretty much be the end of World of Warcraft's prominence. So, what about Shadowlands? How is Shadowlands better than Battle for Azeroth? That is almost certainly what you want to know from a whole bunch of beta testers, which is us. Well, loot is loot. The death of Titanforging completely clarifies the correlation between input and output. It is more healthy. They've largely fixed a bunch of things as well, respecting your time, you know? The weekly grind isn't as wild, Renown is capped, Torghast mandatory content is done with pretty quickly. The weekly box gives you options, there's a higher chance of something good being there. That respects your time. Then the experimental content. Torghast is genuinely brilliant. Islands and Warfronts were not. Then each covenant has got a cool enough little extra activity. You know, and then you've got the cosmetics of the Covenants, you've got their endgame storylines to do, and on cosmetics, yeah, they do tap into the successes, the victories of Legion, albeit not as much in terms of the amount of content to do. And then if we cover World of Warcraft as an RPG, well, it does tap into many of the victories of Legion with how it does its storytelling, especially in the Covenant endgame side of things. And then, of course, we've got other things. The revamped leveling experience, that's something BFA did not have. You can have more characters, more instantly engaging gameplay, and a better new player experience. And of course, that means there'll be more characters. So alt friendliness, it is significantly better. Many important things are bind an account, like the legendary recipes. Yes, they did actually listen to those things. But there's things they maybe didn't listen to. I've just told you how this expansion is besting BFA, but we do have to talk about how it falls into the same traps of BFA. Borrowed power, right? Caused problems back then, it will cause problems in the future. Azerite suck for multi-spec. Covenant power and soul binds also pretty much suck for multi-spec players. And that one percenter thing that this is about min-maxing, that's absolute bull. It's not even about the numbers, it's about fun. It's actually about the choice and building your character, because trust me, an ability that's fun for one spec is probably not fun for another one. That's generally how it goes. And that is a rough thing. And you know, some of it's personal preference. Perhaps you like one covenant ability for one spec, but maybe you like another covenant ability for another spec. Tough luck. The negatives of this are not apparent on the beta because it's not a real world scenario, and while the WoW devs can spin out their philosophical musings, at the end of the day, I think we all know what's going to happen when the rubber hits the road and the players have to engage with this. And this is of course not covering bizarre things like the conduit cooldown energy charge system where they basically had to resort to mobile game-like mechanics in order to make sure the players didn't customize their things too much. Of course, that sucks because that's a situation where you can get a new Legendary, and by the way, they actually massively buffed Legendaries recently to make them more powerful, which means there's a higher chance you'll get a new LEGO and actually want to change your spec. Uh, well, the new system's actually slightly more annoying for that. So yeah, there's going to be issues there. Then of course, Blizzard, you know, they removed reforging because they didn't like you having to return to town to wear your new gear. That's what they did at the end of, was it the end of Cat or the end of Mop? The end of Mop. Well, now you uh, might have to wait days to get your character the way that you want it because you're waiting for energy charges to appear. I don't really think that's particularly cool. I mean, waiting a few days because you got to earn more currency to buy an item, sure, that's regular gameplay, but waiting a few days for an arbitrary timer? I don't think so. Also, build around feature risk exposure. That's what Blizzard calls these things. They call garrisons a build around feature because the expansion is built around it. Same goes for Azerite, same goes for your Legion artifact weapons, and here, Covenants are the build around feature. But Blizzard absolutely believes that a player who just cares about their character, what it looks like and all that stuff, that it's not enough for them to pick a Covenant based on what aesthetically appeals to them, what kind of story they like. No, Blizzard really do think there needs to be player power. And what that has done is that's increased the amount of risk in this expansion. And I would say that after years of being minorly dicked around with, I think most players now just want a 
pure version of WoW's mechanics, and for Blizzard to focus on making more content and more rewards. And certainly if you're a casual player and you don't really care about this and you think it's a problem for the one percenters, well, it does affect you. Because the amount of time that it's taken to fix these things, well, that's going to take away from the time it's going to take to make new content and new rewards for you. Let's talk about this for the 50th percenter. Your average player bang in the middle. Well, Shadowlands will repeat mistakes that led to a lot of top-end player frustrations in the past. Why? Well, these mistakes all stem from Blizzard learning the wrong lessons from Legion. Legion was great sometimes, but it did have many problems, and many of those were actually called out by us beta testers back then too. Legion Legendary Acquisition was a humongous problem if you cared about performance or multi-specking, and the same goes for parts of the artifact weapon progression. I mean, come on, they had people in Mauve Souls three chest runs for countless amounts of time. Now, Legion survived these problems though, right? We've said so far in this video that it actually reversed the trend for WoW. Yeah, why is that? Well. It was fun for the average player, who didn't care about those things. Legion had its strengths, and that's where I feel a bit better about Shadowlands, because it taps into a both a few of Legion's strengths, and also a few of it and BFA's weaknesses. But it absolutely does tap into the strengths of Legion, and that is a very good thing. There is quite a bit of new content to do. There are some big new systems to progress through, and there's genuine fun to be had for the cosmetic-driven players. They will have a bunch to do. Plus, it's pretty alt-friendly. The leveling systems will actually, well, they'll really unlock a lot of allied race gameplay because it will increase its accessibility, and that will drive a lot of playtime. It really does feel a bit lacking, I'll say, in comparison to the quantity of some of the unlockable cosmetics that Legion had, so I'd say that Shadowlands is more a mini-Legion. Blizzard will absolutely need a content schedule that is far more aggressive than BFA. They will need that. And now that we've went through the last three expansions, and this one, I think it's now time to answer the prime question of this video. At the top of this video, we defined WoW needing to be saved as a reversal of stagnation, diminishing, or negative PR, right? Negative spin, negative sentiment. And while Classic was great for the numbers, BFA absolutely put World of Warcraft into a state of decline. I think that is obvious. Shadowlands is immediately more exciting. We've talked about so many things. Weekly box, Titan Forging being gone, gear is gear, there are cosmetics to chase after, Blizzard has genuinely learned a bunch of lessons on player agency and alt friendliness. Covenant power is still a problem, yes, but hey, Legion grew wow even though it had severe problems at the top end. Shadowlands, I'd say, fights with you less than BFA did, and that is a big thing. And leveling, that cannot be overstated. Here's the thing I haven't said thus far. The leveling changes will alone, what they will do is they will increase World of Warcraft's new player conversion rate. And this improves World of Warcraft's unit economics. And yet we're going to treat WoW like, uh, I don't know, it's the business model of a SaaS platform. That's a bit of a weird thing to do, but it actually does matter for companies like Blizz. And this is why we need to talk about World of Warcraft's unit economics. This is the sort of thing that's not talked about enough, but it matters massively. It's the kind of spreadsheety bean counting that us, as players who talk about actually playing the game, that we don't really run into, but it matters, right? What is unit economics? Well, to basically explain this to you, okay? Blizzard spends money on advertising. The more players that they can get who actually stick with the game per dollar of advertising spent, the better, right? Now, if the new player experience and the leveling process of World of Warcraft is better, then that will mean that Blizzard's cost to get one retained player into World of Warcraft will decrease. And that's basically the thing. Companies like Blizzard pump absolute masses of money into marketing, and this leveling change alone totally changes the game there. So with all that said, will it save WoW? Well, if by save we mean reverse a decline, reverse a stagnation, then I'm going to say partially. I think it's going to move it in the right direction, I'll tell you that much. Top end World of Warcraft will still suffer. But in fairness, those guys have suffered in some way since Legion, right? So that's still going to happen. But there's a bit of a difference. There's fun aspirational stuff to do outside of that, right? For those who don't care about that top end player stuff, yeah, I think that this genuinely will be a superior experience to Battle for Azeroth. Of course, save bugs, problems, things that arise at launch that I obviously cannot predict right now, even though the beta is pretty buggy at times. 
I mean, for me, Torghast, that's a game within a game. That is reason enough to get into this expansion, especially because I know that I can get loads more characters up and that each one of those characters, when it goes into Torghast, will get a whole unique set of cool things to do. That's pretty damn exciting. And that's going to drive a lot of gameplay, at least for people like me. And then, of course, what I said about the new player experience increasing the effectiveness of Blizzard's marketing spend, that cannot be overstated. This is vital. You will not see it that much, but I think it will just be sitting there silently going boom and really growing the base end of the game. So if 10.0 can repeat the wins of Shadowlands, right? And the wins of Legion, the expansion after this one. And then if it can avoid borrowed power related missteps, which Blizzard surely must be feeling at this stage because they designed themselves into so many holes that they ended up having to, what, delay the expansion to get things right? They know they made mistakes internally. Absolutely, they must have. So because of all that, We've got a 10.0 that actually doubles down on the wins we've seen so far in 9.0, but moves away from the obvious issues, then we could be in a far better situation. For now though, borrowed power mistakes have actually occurred. That does suck, but outside of that, Blizzard are doing a better job with content in World of Warcraft than they were during Battle for Azeroth. So, I think it is going to reverse the trends that we have been seeing. And to people who care about playing World of Warcraft with their friends and that fun experience they've had in their life for a whole bunch of time, people who care about that actually continuing, I think you're moving in a better direction with this one. I think we really are. There you go. That's what I think is basically going on here. Uh, yeah, you know, if... I don't think this is as good as Legion. I think it won't be as fun as Legion for a whole bunch of people. But I think it's going to be net positive. So there you go. By the definition I said at the start of this video, that is kind of saving wow. That's reversing stagnation. And that's the thing that's going to matter to Blizzard because they need to get this right. And if by the time these sort of classic, you know, classic, it's like a shot of steroids, you know, TBC, Wrath, by the time that those run out, if Blizzard can manage to keep on doubling down on the strengths that we've noticed in Legion and a little bit in Shadowlands, and then they move away from those downsides, then we could be in a genuinely incredible space. I do think it's sad that it's taken this team so long to learn lessons that people have basically been preaching to them for five years now. But that's where we are. Okay, that's it. That's my thoughts from all of my time analyzing World of Warcraft and, of course, being in the Shadowlands beta. Tell me what you think. If you're a beta tester, I absolutely want to know where you think this one's going to be sort of going. So thank you very much for watching. And with that said, I will see you next time.